In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at unit testing an Angular 2 native script mobile application. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to build these unit tests to test various components within the application and make sure they pass or fail. And this is actually pretty beneficial when it comes to building any application, mobile or not, because it'll help you eliminate or minimize uh, plenty of potential bugs before you actually release it. Uh, so I do have my terminal open. We're going to create a new project uh, because it'll be the easiest to understand. Uh, but go ahead and say, uh, let's say TNS create my project, and then we're going to use the ng tag. Uh, so that way it's an Angular 2 application. And for reference, I am using uh, version 2.3.1 of uh, native script. So with the project created, let's go ahead and navigate into it. And we're going to add uh, two platforms. But in reality, I'm only actually going to test for iOS. Uh, but it's totally up to you what you want to test for. You can add for both or one or, or neither, I guess, if you want. But let's go ahead and say uh, TNS platform add iOS. And then finally, TNS platform add Android. Perfect. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up this project in uh, whatever editor we prefer. I'm actually going to be using Atom by GitHub, but it's totally up to you. So I'm going to say Atom. So I'm going to open up this project. And for whatever reason, I have a ton of uh, empty tabs that opened up. So let me close them all. So what we're, what our goal here is, so to keep this simple, uh, we have one native script component by default in our fresh project. This is our app.component.ts file found in our app directory. We're actually going to unit test this file. We're not going to create any new files. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to initialize our testing framework. Uh, so going back into the terminal, uh, what we want to do is we want to run TNS test init. When we run this, it's going to say, what testing framework do we want to choose? Uh, so each one of them offer their own flavors of unit tests. Um, they're, in my personal opinion, they're all pretty similar. So if, if you choose one, you'll probably be able to live perfectly okay with the others. But I'm going to go ahead and use Jasmine. So it just added all of my Jasmine dependencies. Um, it also created a test directory that resides within the app directory. Uh, the thing to note about this, um, and this is a little weird, but it actually created an example.js file, even though that we're using a TypeScript project. Uh, so as of right now, uh, there is on GitHub an open ticket that says, uh, if you're using an Angular project, we should probably be using a TypeScript file. Uh, this ticket is still open. And as of right now, it is October 6th. 2016. So in the future, I imagine that it will uh, switch over to TypeScript. But in any sense, it doesn't really matter because the commands are pretty much the same between the two. Uh, so we have this example.js file. It could really be called whatever you want it to be called. As long as there's JavaScript files inside of this test directory, they're going to be tested. So we're going to leave it as uh, example.js. You know what? Let's go ahead and, and actually rename it. Uh, it'll make it more uh, convenient towards uh, more of a maintainable unit test or a more maintainable project overall. So if I rename this, let's call this app.component.js to really match the uh, component that we're going to test. Um, again, this, this naming convention, it could be whatever you want. It's totally up to you. So as of right now, uh, if I open up my simulator and I open up my terminal, uh, there's one test and it should it should pass every single time because we're expecting true to be true. That's that's a that's a test that will always pass. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say TNS, and then we're going to say uh, test iOS. So you can see that there was something that briefly appeared on the screen that said that our one test passed. It also says that um, our test passed inside of the terminal as well. Uh, but that test uh, really doesn't help us much. Um, in fact, it it um, doesn't really test any of the Angular 2 stuff uh, that our project has to offer. So actually, in order to test Angular 2 things, we actually need to import a few uh, dependencies. Uh, so first off, uh, we want to be able to test um, Angular 2 things uh, which have annotations on them. Uh, so we need to import the following. 
we need to say var reflect equals require reflect metadata um, and this will allow us to examine the annotations. Uh, we also need to say var component equals require app.component uh, which is actually going to be that uh, component.js component.ts file um, back a level. So we actually do need to say uh, go back a level. So we now have imported the, the component that we wish to test. We have the metadata imported. Uh, so now let's go ahead and define our test. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and remove that one test that already existed. And we want to do the following. Uh, we're going to say var app component. Uh, we're doing this because we want to really initialize this variable uh, before all of the tests run. So we can say before run or before each, uh, which is actually a part of Jasmine framework. And we're going to say function. And at this point, we're going to say app component equals new component dot app component. Uh, so what that did is it, it because app component right here, uh, this TS file, this is just a class. It's like any other class. Uh, we can instantiate it and add it to um, that variable. So that's what we did. So this is now uh, this is now that class. Uh, the next thing we want to do is create our first test. So the first test uh, we want to see uh, what the what the number of counts uh, taps is. So by default. Uh, when we start our application, the counter will be 16. And when we call uh, get, it's actually going to say 16 taps left. It's going to return this. Uh, so let's give it a shot. So we're going to say it, and we're going to say this is going to uh, this is going to be a label. It could be anything we want, um, but it's going to let us know what test this was. Verify default message. Let's call it that function. And we're gonna we're gonna set up a test. So we're gonna say expect app component dot message dot to be sixteen taps left. Uh, so in theory, uh, because when we first load that we first uh, set up this this variable, it should be sixteen according to what this file says. So that should pass. Uh, let's go ahead and set up uh, a test that probably will not pass. Let's go ahead and say decrease tap count. And the goal of this is to decrease the tap count and then see if our messages match up again. So let's check it out. So this time, uh, before we actually do our do our test, we'll say app component dot on tap. Uh, so what this on tap method did was it called this function and it decreased our counter. So actually after that, it should be 15, but we're going to put this to the actual test. We're going to say uh, expect app component dot message. Remember that should be 15 as of right now to be 16 taps left. So this should not match. This should not work. Uh, so let's go ahead and test it out. So you can see one failed. So it, there was two tests. Uh, the first one succeeded. The second one failed. And then the, the fail message here, it said expected 15 taps. Um, so we, we had 15, but we really wanted it to be 16, which is exactly what our test set out to be. So it really gave us some useful information to help uh, fix this problem. And that's really the benefit of unit testing. So we could have uh, plenty more tests. Uh, this is just one test uh, suite. Uh, we could have more than that. We can test each one of our files um, and do all kinds of neat stuff that happens uh, before the application actually runs. Uh, so uh, this, again, was a native script Angular 2 application. We used JavaScript, even though that our, uh, our project was TypeScript. But that should be fixed in the, in the future, uh, so there should be no problems there.